guys, David Putty back with another guide for you all, and in this video I wanted to cover a few tips and formulas to make your life easier when running trade up contracts. The reason I put this video together was that I had not realized how many people rely on using a trade up calculator to guess and check as they're setting up their trade up contract, whether it's seeing what you need your overall average input float to be for a given wear condition you're going for, or what your remaining skins floats need to be as you start purchasing the inputs. The formulas to calculate these are very simple, so I wanted to quickly cover them and save you all a ton of time when planning and running trade ups. I'll also cover how people set up trades to go for specific, uh, I guess, meme floats, like the 0 .069, 0 .0420, 0 .1337, all that good stuff. This video is going to be a bit more math and numbers focused, albeit fairly simple math, but if that's not your thing, totally understand that and you're obviously welcome to click away from this video now. But with that, let's go ahead and get started. When you're running a trade up, the reason that the potential output skins can have different float values is due to skins having different wear limits or float caps. There are three main scenarios you'll come across. The first are skins like this M4A4 Coalition that have no minimum or maximum float cap. The second scenario is skins that only have a maximum float cap, like this FAMAS Meltdown. And finally, the last scenario is skins that have both a minimum and maximum float cap, like this USP Whiteout that has a minimum float of 0.06 and a maximum float cap of 0.80. There is one additional scenario, and that's skins that have only a minimum float cap. However, I didn't include that here, as there are only 10 of those skins out of about 1,100 in the game, and you also use the exact same formula we'll see here shortly for skins that have both a capped minimum and maximum float cap. But starting with the most straightforward scenario, in order to calculate the input float needed, you divide the max float for a given wear condition by the skin's maximum float cap. So in the example with an uncapped skin, if we're going for a factory new output, the max float for the wear condition is of course 0.07. Since the M4A4 has an uncapped max float, we simply divide 0.07 by 1, which is obviously 0.07. The reason I even bothered mentioning that is because that makes it easier to understand how to calculate this for the other scenarios we'll take a look at. For skins with only a maximum float cap like this FAMAS Meltdown, we do the exact same process as we just did in the first scenario, dividing the max float for a given wear condition by the skin's maximum float cap. In this case, for factory output, we take 0.07 and divide it by 0.40, and we can see that we need our trade's average input float to be 0.175 or less to get a factory new FAMAS Meltdown. Once again, it would be the same process for minimal wear, only using 0.15 for the max wear condition. The last scenario is the most tricky, but only because it involves an additional step to take. Using the USP whiteout for our example, the first step is we subtract the minimum float cap for the skin from the max float for a given wear condition. So 0.07 minus 0.06 gives us 0.01. The second step is we subtract the skin's minimum float cap from the skin's maximum float cap. So 0.80 minus 0.06 gives us 0.74. Finally, we just divide those two numbers and we get the average input float we need for a factory new USP whiteout. If we use that average input float on a trade calculator, we can see that it would give us a factory new USP. And once again, it'd be the same steps for minimal wear or any other wear condition for that matter. There are many scenarios where it's helpful to be able to quickly calculate what the remaining input floats need to be for a trade-up contract. I'll use the two most common examples where I find this to be most helpful. For the first example, say we're running a trade-up for a skin with the same float cap we were just taking a look at for the USP Whiteout, like this Desert Eagle Crimson Web with a minimum float cap of 0.06 and a maximum float cap of 0.80. And using the formula we just covered, we know we need our average input float to be 0.0135 or less for a factory new. Often with these trade-ups using a rare or inactive collection, it's extremely difficult to find really low float skins, so typically you're going to be using one, maybe two skins from that collection, and the rest are really low float filler skins from other collections. So let's say we're just going to be using one low float mil spec skin from the eSports 2014 collection that Deagle Crimson Web is in, and the other nine skins will be low float fillers. If we jump over to the Steam Market and see the lowest cost mil spec skin from the collection has a float of 0 .0407, how do we know if that'll be a good skin to pick up for the contract we're setting up? What would that mean the remaining 9 filler skins floats need to be? All that you need to do is take the overall average input float you need, in this case 0 .0135, and multiply that by 10, because we use 10 skins in a trade-up contract. Then you subtract the float value of the skin we're considering picking up for that number. In this example, it would be 0 .0943. Finally, just divide that number by 9 since we need to purchase 9 more filler skins, and we can see that we needed a full value of our filler inputs to be 0.0104 or less. Now it's much easier to decide if that low cost skin we saw on the market is worth buying, or if we want to pay more for a lower float option. The second scenario where I use this process the most often is when I'm trying to have a specific output float. Typically this is the common meme floats of 0 0.069, 0 0.0420, 
0.01337, all the uh, usual ones there. So if you've ever wanted to make a craft like this 0 0.06969 Big Dick King AK, some immature degenerate crafted, this is the process to do that. It is also possible that, that immature degenerate was me. Anyways, the uh, process I found that's easiest to craft specific floats is I'll first pick up around 5 to 6 skins I'll need for the trade up contract. I'm not worried about the specific final float I want at this point, just trying to keep my overall average input float in the ballpark. So, say we picked up these first 6 skins from the Snakebite collection and our average input float is currently 0.07601, blah blah blah. Then it's going to be essentially the same steps we just covered. First we multiply the final output float we want by 10, so we end up with 0.6969. Then we take the overall average input float of 0.07601 from the 6 skins we've already purchased and multiply that by 6. Subtract that from the 0.6969 number and divide the result by 4 for the average float we need from each of the remaining 4 skins we need to pick up. Here's what that would look like plugging that into the trade-up calculator so you guys can see if this would get us that 0 0.06969 float we're looking for. It's unlikely you'll find 4 skins on the market with exactly the 0 0.060203 float you need, so what you want to do is pick up a couple more skins that are as close to that float as you can find, and then run the formula again to see what the final 1-2 to two skins floats you need to pick up are. I've covered this in a couple previous videos, however I feel like I've never explained it well. Even when I've watched my videos back, it can sound a bit confusing to me. The way that I've generally explained it is that output percentages from a trade-up contract are determined by the total number of potential output skins, but I think I can make that a lot easier to understand using some visual aids I've put together. I'm going to use an example setup for a trade using mil-spec skins from the Train Collection and Gods and Monsters Collection. We can see that in the Train Collection there is one restricted class skin, while in the Gods and Monsters Collection there are two. A common setup for trading up for older collection skins is using one skin from the old collection and nine filler skins from an actively dropping collection, like the train collection here. If we add the visuals for potential output skins, it would look like this. So with our setup, the total potential output skins from the Gods and Monsters collection is two, while the train collection has one. We have one Gods and Monsters input skin and nine from the train collection. If we just simply add up all of those potential output skins, the total number of potential output skins in the trade is 11, 9 from the train collection, and 2 from gods and monsters. Then to calculate the output percentages, you just divide the total number of outputs from one collection by the total outputs for the trade up. In this case, for gods and monsters, it would be 2 divided by 11, or about 18%, and for train, it would be 9 divided by 11, or about 82%. If we throw this setup into a trade calculator, we can see that's exactly what the output percentages show. I was obviously rounding in the previous slide, but we can see that we'd have an 81.82% chance for the Tech 9 Red Quartz from the Train Collection, and an 18.18% chance to land a Gods and Monster skin. That's the reason that filler collections with only one potential output skin are so valuable. If the Train Collection had two potential output skins instead of one, for example, now the total number of potential output skins for the trade-up would have been 20, nearly cutting our odds of landing a Gods and Monsters Collection skin in half. And that'll about wrap up this video. I just wanted to break down a few of those formulas to help give you all a better understanding of trade-up contracts and the math behind them. Like always, if anyone has questions or if there's anything I didn't explain well, please do reach out and let me know. I've been getting a chance to connect with more people in the community recently, and it's been awesome. A quick final note, sometimes it's challenging coming up with ideas for what to make guide videos on, so if there's anything y'all would want to see or that would be helpful, please leave a comment and I'll make sure to cover it in an upcoming video. But with that, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.